If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. Imagine this, a secret plan by the global elites to create a one-world government by using advanced technology to manipulate and control the beliefs of the masses. Large-scale events involving holographic projections in the sky, simulated fake alien invasions, and religious deceptions will be orchestrated to achieve this goal. This isn't a scene from a sci-fi movie, it's a real program, and if it's happening right now, it might be too late. This program is known as Project Bluebeam. Project Bluebeam has four specific goals. Abolish religion, abolish pride in one's country, destroy individual creativity, and embrace a one-world government and religion. The program states that this will happen by faking earthquakes, having mass UFO sightings, and using frequency waves to control the mind, and inevitably forcing the world into this one-world government through fear. Your world is about to change. Look around at the events happening in the world. Project Bluebeam is here, and you're about to see why. Serge Monist was a Canadian investigative journalist who is often associated with the development of the Project Bluebeam. Monist claimed to have uncovered a secret plan by a global elite to manipulate and control the beliefs of the masses in order to establish a new world order. He wrote extensively about Project Bluebeam and other conspiracy theories, detailing his ideas in various publications. Monist's most well-known work on Project Bluebeam is the book titled Project Bluebeam, NASA and the New World Order. In this work, he alleged that a staged, large-scale event involving advanced technology, such as holographic projections, would be orchestrated to deceive and control the world's population. The goal of Project Bluebeam was to get the entire planet to adopt a single religion and then a single government. Serge was an active member of the Social Credit Party of Canada. He wasn't some random person making up a conspiracy, he was well credited. He asserted that his information came from unspecified whistleblowers and insiders within the alleged secret organizations orchestrating the plan. Monist claimed to have inside knowledge from individuals who were part of the secretive global elite, including those within NASA and the United Nations. In the early 1990s, he started writing on the theme of the New World Order and conspiracies hatched by secret societies, being particularly inspired by the works of William Guy Carr. In 1994, he published Project Bluebeam, in which he detailed his claim that NASA, with the help of the United Nations, was attempting to implement a New Age religion with the Antichrist at its head and start a New World Order via a technologically simulated Second Coming of Christ. The project has four stages in which Surge goes into detail, but first we have to take a look at the early 1990s right before Project Bluebeam came around. The early 90s was an interesting time for the United States military. It was the ending of the Cold War, and the CIA during this time with the fight against the Soviets tried implementing a new set of weapons, mind reading. The CIA set out to assess how serious the threat from Soviet psychotronics was. They asked parapsychologists Hal Puthoff and Russell Targ of the Stanford Research Institute to look for repeatable psychic phenomena that might be militarily useful. Working with psychic Ingo Swan, the duo developed what they called a perceptual channel across kilometer distances, which means the ability to witness objects, people, and events at a distance. This is called remote viewing. This started the CIA's Project Stargate. Project Stargate focused on investigating psychic phenomena, particularly the practice of remote viewing, where individuals claim to gather information about distant or unseen targets using extrasensory perception, ESP, or anomalous cognition. The CIA hired hundreds of psychic spies. The project continued for more than two decades, officially ending in 1995. During its existence, it involved several researchers and psychics, and its primary motivation was to explore whether psychic abilities could be applied for military and intelligence purposes during the Cold War. It was deemed successful enough to convince them to expand the project. The team is said to have identified spies, located Soviet weapons and technologies, such as a nuclear submarine in 1979, helped find lost Scud missiles in the first Gulf War and plutonium in North Korea in 1994. Now, back to the early 1990s, a period marked by shifting global tensions. It was during this time that Serge Monist unveiled Project Bluebeam. At first, the concept sounded like science fiction. However, as Monist detailed the four intricate stages of the project, a realization dawned on people. What seemed like a conspiracy was unfolding right before their eyes. The line between fiction and reality blurred, and for many, the unsettling thought lingered. Was it already too late? In order for society to get to Project Bluebeam, they must go through these steps noted by Serge Monist. 
The first step in Project Bluebeam is to break down all archaeological knowledge in the world. It deals with staging earthquakes at certain precise locations around the planet where supposed new discoveries will finally explain for them that the meanings of the basic doctrines of all the world's major religions are wrong. This falsification will be used to make the population believe that all religious doctrine has been misunderstood and misinterpreted. The second step involves the projection of a massive light show into the sky. Using lasers and 3D holograms, the New World Order will project images of God, Jesus Christ, and the prophets into the sky. The general public will have no way of explaining these celestial images, and so the New World Order will claim them to be proof of their newly established religion. These gods projected will then merge into one and it will be known as the Antichrist, as per Project Bluebeam. Now things are about to get scarier. The third step involves two-way electronic thought control, which will be used by the Antichrist to gain control over the masses. After the world's religions have dissolved, the world will apparently spiral into chaos. The third step deals with telepathic electronic two-way communication where ELF, extra low frequency, VLF, very low frequency, and LF, low frequency waves, will reach the people of the Earth through the insides of their brains, making each person believe that his own God is speaking to him from within his own soul. Such rays from satellite are fed from the memory of computers that store much data about the human being and his languages. These rays will then interlace and interweave with the natural thinking processes influencing the masses into this one world government. The Antichrist or deity will use additional technologies to disrupt weather patterns, cause epidemics, and generally exacerbate the chaos. Eventually, humanity's only choice will be to give their undying devotion to the Antichrist and the New World Order, the only ones who can save them from total destruction. The fourth step involves universal supernatural manifestations using electronic means. This step contains three different orientations. The first one is to make mankind believe that an alien invasion is about to occur upon every major city on the Earth by mass UFO sightings reported and incidents involving military and UFOs. This is to push each major nation into using its nuclear capability to strike back. In this manner, it would put each of these nations in a state of full disarmament before the United Nations after the false attack. The second is to make the Christian believe that a major rapture is occurring, with a simple played divine intervention of an alleged good alien force coming to save the good people from a brutal satanic attack. Its goal is to get rid of all significant opposition to the New World Order. The third orientation is a mixture of electronic and supernatural forces. The waves, frequencies used at that time, will allow supernatural forces to travel through fiber optics cable, coaxial cable, electric and telephone lines in order to penetrate all electronic equipment and appliances that will by then all have a special microchip installed. The goal of this step deals with the materialization of satanic ghosts, specters and poltergeists all across the globe in order to push all populations to the edge of a wave of permanent psychological disorder. In stage number one, it says Project Bluebeam will be used to make the population believe that all religious doctrine has been misunderstood and misinterpreted and causing general confusion among the masses, then making the world believe in one religion. But in order to achieve this, they would have to make man-made earthquakes. Then they would find new discoveries showing that religion was misunderstood. When we look at the Bible, the general public will think that it's the oldest and most accurate book. But this was changed when the ancient Sumerian tablets were found and significantly changed the dating of the story of Noah's Ark. The Epic of Gilgamesh was found in the mid-19th century and one of the earliest surviving works of literature. It follows the journey of King Gilgamesh as he seeks to become a better ruler and achieve eternal life. A significant episode involves Gilgamesh's quest for immortality, leading him to the last known surviving King Utnapishtim and the only mortal granted eternal life by the gods. Utnapishtim recounts the gods' decision to bring a flood to wipe out humanity his construction of a large boat to survive the deluge, and the eventual granting of immortality. The narrative of the Epic of Gilgamesh significantly changed the narrative of the Noah's Ark story. Project Bluebeam Stage 1 asserts the deliberate introduction of confusion and misunderstanding into archaeological knowledge. The discoveries of ancient texts, like the Epic of Gilgamesh, disrupt conventional religious narratives, prompting us to question the authenticity of established doctrines. These revelations, intentional or not, contribute to the narrative that religious teachings may have been misconstrued over time, and this is what Project Bluebeam tries to achieve. But in order to achieve this, they would have to stage earthquakes also mentioned in Stage 1. 
When we look at earthquakes around the world, we may think they are natural, but there is evidence showing that we have the technology to start earthquakes. For example, induced seismicity, typically earthquakes and tremors that are caused by human activity, such as industrial processes related to the extraction or injection of fluids into the Earth's crust, causing powerful earthquakes at the location chosen. For the past 10 years, there have been hundreds of catastrophic earthquakes, and most recently September 2023 in Morocco. A magnitude 6.8 earthquake killed more than 2,000 people. Then in February 2023, another catastrophic earthquake hit Syria and Turkey. In stage number two, Project Bluebeam states the projection of a massive light show into the sky. Using satellites, lasers, and 3D holograms, the New World Order will project images of gods, Jesus Christ, and prophets into the sky. The general public will have no way of explaining these celestial images, and so the New World Order will claim them to be proof of their newly established religion. It states that the projection of the gods for each region will be different, and going by what religion is most popular for each place. When this happens, the gods will then merge into one. This one deity will then tell the public that all holy books and scriptures were wrong, and that religion is the reason for wars and chaos in the world. This one deity will then convince the public to step into the new age and embrace what is happening. This deity will be the Antichrist, and will be the real and new religion according to Project Bluebeam. Recently, there's been a lot of videos showing holographic images in the sky, making people curious and sometimes confused. These holographic displays look like religious or celestial figures, similar to what Project Bluebeam talks about in its second stage. For example, in Argentina, a photo went viral showing the sun shining through the clouds, making an image that looked like Jesus Christ. This got people talking about whether celestial images can be manipulated. Also, technology is combining artificial intelligence with holographic displays, creating amazing shows. In concerts, they use holograms for some artists who aren't here and the technology used looks as if it's the real person. This makes it easier to imagine projecting religious figures using holograms, especially considering the advancements in technology. In Dubai, they had a drone light show with over 800 drones telling stories about the significance of the pearl and an Emirati space explorer. This big display suggests that holographic presentations, like those mentioned in Project Bluebeam's second stage, could be possible on a large scale. All of these events make us question what we see and makes us wonder if these holographic displays are part of a bigger plan. The idea of putting images of religious figures or even gods in the sky seems less like a far-fetched idea when we look at real examples of the images that have happened recently. As we move on to number three, things get even more transparent. Stage three involves two-way electronic thought control, which will be used by the Antichrist to gain control over the masses. After the world's religions have dissolved, the world will apparently spiral into chaos. These electronic signals are known as microwaves. These waves can directly affect how we feel and think. Linking electronic thought control to belief manipulation involves understanding the impact of microwave technologies on our emotions and thoughts. Microwaves, the same kind present in devices like mobile phones and Wi-Fi routers, have the potential to influence how we feel and think. Despite being invisible, these electromagnetic waves surround us, raising concerns about their possible use to shape human emotions and thoughts. Project Bluebeam suggests that these technologies could be exploited to control individuals, steering them away from personal choices and values by exerting influence over their behaviors and attitudes. In essence, the concept revolves around the idea that these electronic signals could be employed to direct and mold human cognition in ways that may not align with individual preferences or beliefs. This concept proposes that the Antichrist could potentially exploit these waves to manipulate how individuals and groups perceive things, exerting control over their behaviors and attitudes. In essence, it raises concerns about the possibility of these electronic signals being used to shape and direct human emotions and thoughts in ways that may not align with personal choices or values. Project Bluebeam says that technology will be used to gain access to the individual's brain to make them think and hear whatsoever is needed to be heard for control. The Antichrist will then continue to use microwave technologies to disrupt weather patterns, cause epidemics, and generally exacerbate the chaos among the world to push for a one-world government. Now step four is the scariest one of them all, because it might be happening right now, and it may be too late. Step four talks about the faking of a world crisis or war that will bring the world together, not by choice, but by fear. This step contains three different orientations. The first one is to make mankind believe that an alien invasion is about to occur upon every major city on the earth. This is to push each major nation into fear among its citizens and having to use its nuclear capability to strike back. In this manner, it would put each of these nations in a state of full disarmament before the United Nations after the false attack and inevitably accepting the new world government out of fear. Recent times have witnessed a surge in UFO sightings, 
coupled with unprecedented government disclosures acknowledging the existence of unidentified aerial phenomena. These revelations have sparked widespread discussions and raised questions about the potential emergence of a narrative surrounding a fake alien invasion, a concept central to Project Bluebeam's fourth stage. In an unprecedented move, Congress publicly acknowledged possessing information on UFOs, contributing to the public's growing awareness of extraterrestrial-related activities. Simultaneously, various videos capturing unidentified flying objects have circulated widely, adding fuel to the speculation about the existence of extraterrestrial life. The entertainment industry has played a role in shaping public perceptions, with numerous movies and TV shows portraying scenarios of fake alien invasions. This media trend, combined with actual UFO sightings and official government acknowledgments, adds a layer of complexity to the unfolding narrative. It prompts us to consider whether these elements align with the predictions laid out in Project Blue Beam, where a staged alien invasion serves as a catalyst for geopolitical and societal transformation. The second part of step four after faking an alien invasion project Bluebeam will use other technologies to scare the rest of the world's population into following this new world order and religion. One of the specific examples mentioned was to convince Christians that the rapture is happening. The rapture for Christians is a term described in the Bible as an event that happens at the end of the world. It states that Jesus will come to earth from heaven and take his worshipers. He will come with angels and other beings to save his followers. At this point, everyone in the world will be affected with major psychosis from the previous stages, and the Antichrist will have full control of the individual. Because of the control, people will want peace at any cost, even if it costed them their life, causing chaos, wars, and fighting among nations. If you don't see this happening right now around the world, look again. By 1995 and 1996, Manas started to tell people that he was being hunted by the police and authorities for involvement in networks of prohibited information. He had homeschooled his two children, who were then taken away and made wards of the state in September 1996 so that they would receive a public education. In 1996, he was finally arrested for spreading misinformation and then he was released after a night in jail. The following day, Serge was found dead in his home with no prior medical problems. The death certificate said that he died of a heart attack in his home. His followers claim his death was suspicious, suggesting he was assassinated by psychotronic weapons to keep from continuing his investigations. Other theories state that he was telling the truth, and Project Bluebeam is a real incident that was supposed to, or if not happening right now, and the government ultimately do what they do best and silenced him. As we reflect on the intricacies of Project Blue Beam and Serge Monist's warnings, it's crucial to approach this narrative with a blend of curiosity and skepticism. While the concept may initially sound like a speculative conspiracy theory, the alignment between certain present-day events and Monist's projections raises thought-provoking questions. In exploring technological progress, we find ourselves surrounded by advancements that once resided solely in the realm of science fiction such as holographic displays, artificial intelligence. These innovations blur the line between reality and simulation, echoing the projections envisioned in Project Bluebeam's first stage. The global landscape today marked by global pandemics, political tensions and environmental concerns draws parallels with Monist's vision of a staged crisis ushering in a new world order driven by fear. As we witness these events unfold, it prompts contemplation about the potential manipulation of circumstances for broader geopolitical purposes. UFO disclosures and discussions surrounding extraterrestrial phenomena add an intriguing layer to the narrative. Government acknowledgments, coupled with a surge in sightings and media portrayals of fake alien invasions in movies and TV shows raise the question, could these elements be part of a carefully crafted narrative, as foretold in Project Bluebeam's fourth stage? Information manipulation, a central theme in Monist's warnings, finds resonance in the age of social media and instant communication. The malleability of narratives surrounding historical events and religious doctrines prompts us to question the authenticity of the information we encounter daily. Monist warned of a plan to manipulate religious beliefs, orchestrate a one-world government, and use advanced technology to control the masses. If it's here, do you think it might be too late? Now I'm not saying I'm all in on the blue beam idea, but the core concept, the manipulation of beliefs, the orchestration of events, it's not that far-fetched when you look at how information flows today. We're bombarded with narratives from every corner, and sometimes it's hard to separate fact from fiction. So, I want to thank you for being a part of this journey. Running this channel solo, your support is not just appreciated, it's what keeps this exploration alive. Your presence, your questions, and your enthusiasm mean the world to me. So what are your thoughts? Do you think Project Bluebeam is happening right now? Or could this all be a coincidence? Comment your thoughts, I really appreciate your opinions. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to stay connected and dropping a like. It truly helps me out. And here's the exciting part. Our journey doesn't end here. There are more mysteries waiting to be unraveled, and I would be honored to have you 
you as we dive into these mysteries together. So let's keep that curiosity alive, nurture our open minds, and be prepared for whatever unexplained wonders come our way. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and like I say, remember to always seek the truth.